The universe is expanding. Uh, but a lot of the things in the universe are not expanding. You're not expanding. The galaxy is not expanding. We talked about this a little. That's because there are forces holding it together. The Earth isn't expanding because its gravitational force holds it together. Uh, I'm not expanding because the chemical bonds between the atoms in my body hold it together. The galaxy is not expanding because gravity holds it together. Um, but a wavelength of light doesn't have such a force to hold it together. So as the universe expands, wavelengths of light expand along with it. Uh, so this is another view of where the redshift comes from, uh, that wavelengths uh, of light expand along with the universe. That's an interesting thought. Uh, so rather than thi so the question is why do we observe light from distant galaxies to be redshifted? Uh, in this interpretation, it's not because these things are moving away from us. It's because during the time between when that wavelength was emitted and when we see it, the universe has expanded, and the wavelength has expanded along with it, and therefore we see a longer wavelength than we would have uh, from, some, from uh, a, a photon that hadn't been traveling as long, because the universe, in that case, wouldn't have, wouldn't have expanded as much. Uh, wavelengths of light expand along with the universe. Uh, and so, uh, when we observe uh, distant objects, the wavelength we observe is longer than when it was emitted. Because the universe has been expanding during that time. This is, yes, go ahead. So if the universe is expanding as light is traveling to us, mm -hmm. then by the time the light reaches us, the universe will be somewhat larger than when, than when the light was emitted. Yeah. So is the time is the uh, time that, that we you know that we you know calculate in, in, in the past is that the distance uh, divided by I mean is that the uh, original distance divided by the speed of light or okay so uh, the uh, so there's the this is this complicated thing about what do we mean by distance in an expanding universe uh, and what you mean this is a good question what you mean by distance is how much, it, it, okay, so the first thing to say is that uh, cosmologists worry about this a lot, and there are different kinds of distances that can be defined. There's the coordinate distance, which doesn't change as the universe expands. There are other kinds of distances. In the particular case of what we're doing right now, uh, the key way you measure distance, remember, is the standard candle. So you define what's called the luminosity distance, which is how much fainter something looks. And so basically, distance is defined. Uh, so let me, this is kind of a parenthesis. What do I mean by distance? Distance is defined by this equation. So what you mean by distance in this case is how much fainter are the objects you're looking at uh, than, uh, than otherwise. Uh, and so something that's twice as far away, what does that mean for something to be twice as far away? It means the light from a standard candle is four times fainter. And so you define distance as uh, the dimming of light because that's the way you measure the thing. And then you have to be careful when you're doing this out in, in, in strict mathematical terms, you have to be careful that, 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 kind, that the way you've defined, you don't get confused about which kind of distance you're, you're working on. Uh, so that defines distance. Then time, the look back time, turns out to be cr a more or less, uh, certainly for short distances, correctly defined as distance over C. Uh, but you do have to worry about this when you get into large cosmological distances. And uh, uh, I don't want to go into that, but the different kinds of distances are related to each other in complicated ways. Uh, OK, so this is, how you, this is uh, basically back to the question of how you get the x-axis on that graph. Uh, I'm now talking about the y-axis, the scale factor. So then uh, you want to, how do you measure the scale factor? The scale factor, so the scale factor now of the universe now divided by the scale factor then when you emitted that wavelength 
is going to be equal to the observed wavelength divided by the wavelength of the light when it was emitted, because that's how much larger the universe has gotten. And the wavelengths have gotten big along with it. So that's equal to uh, emit plus delta lambda, as we've defined it before, over lambda emit, which is equal to 1 plus z. The redshift z, remember, is the change in the wavelength divided by the wavelength when it was emitted. So by measuring redshifts, you can tell what the scale of the universe was relative to the scale of the universe now uh, when that light was emitted. Now, remember I defined the scale factor now to be 1. So that means 1 over a is equal to 1 plus z, or the scale factor of the universe in units where it's currently equal to 1 is equal to 1 over 1 plus z. And z, you measure. And so, uh, in principle, you can measure both, both axes of that graph. And so, if I now go back to, that, to, to my plot, You could measure some points on this plot. Now, all of them are in the past, not the future, because you can't, uh, you can't look into the future by this light travel time trick. Uh, but you could go out there and you could discover, uh, if you made you know, really excellent measurements, you could discover that there's a point right here, that a particular uh, galaxy or whatever it is you're looking at is, is far away such that the time back is this. And uh, then you measure the redshift, you get a scale factor. Uh, and you could measure uh, that uh, uh, at that time the universe had such and such a scale factor. And if you measured a whole bunch of these things, and they sort of lined up in this nice way, uh, then you might conclude, well, uh, the universe is doing this. And you might then extrapolate to determine what the universe is going to do in the future. Uh, and so. This is just the Hubble diagram, interpreted in a slightly different way. Uh, and uh, being looked at at a distance sufficiently far away that the rate of expansion uh, would have been different back then uh, than it is now. So uh, I'm going to draw it all again. Here's A, here's T, there's this, uh, here's one of these. Uh, and here's this. But you know, that's not usually how we plot the Hubble diagram. What we're usually plotting, as you'll recall, is distance versus velocity, because those are the things we actually measure. Velocity is redshift, z. And remember that uh, 1 over 1 plus z equals a. Um, or, let's see, 1 over a, uh, 1 plus z, uh, a over a, 1 over a, 1 minus a over a, yeah. 1 minus a over a equals z. So this represents the scale factor, this axis. Whereas this, uh, what we actually usually plot is m minus m, which you'll recall is equal to 5 log d over 10 parsecs. Uh, and so <coughs> this scale represents time, because distance can be converted to time because we know the speed of light. So this is a time axis in really weird units. And this is a scale factor axis in really weird units. But you can therefore transform each of these lines, uh, which is scale factor versus time, into an equivalent line on this plot. Uh, so the green line is the plot where, where the universe just expands. Uh, and there's no mass, nothing slows down, so it kind of looks like this. All right, now, what are the points? This is now. and. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the time factor. And then up here is then. Okay, So you're going from now to then. So you're kind of sitting on this point looking back this way. 
Uh, and here is scale factor a equals 1. And here's scale factor a equals small. OK? Because the z is getting bigger, therefore a is getting smaller. So what would the red curve look like on this plot of the things we actually measure? 